King Charles III will continue his constitutional duties, including his weekly visits with the British Prime Minister, while he undergoes treatment for cancer at home. So tributes and well wishes are pouring in for King Charles following his cancer diagnosis that was announced yesterday. Uh, some of those include ones from our Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, U.S. President Joe Biden, and other world leaders and celebrities expressing concern once they learn the news. So let's show you a live shot at Buckingham Palace this morning. This is what's happening in the city of London. The Royal Standard is flying high. The palace announcing the king's diagnosis through an official statement. They said the king remains, quote, wholly positive about the process. Joining us live from London, England, not Buckingham Palace, though, with more on how this could affect the king's role as regent is Afia Hagen. She is, of course, CTV royal commentator. Nice to see you again. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to see you. Uh, you know, I, I want to remind everybody, this is what the official statement looked like and said on the King's recent diagnosis. His Majesty today commenced a schedule of regular treatments during which he has been advised by doctors to postpone public facing duties. Uh, Fia, so we learned this morning that his constitutional or his official state duties, I guess we would call them here, those are going to still happen. But what was your reaction when you heard the news and what's the latest happening today? Well, the latest today is the king is resting at home. He's actually at Clarence House. Uh, so the royal standard flying at Buckingham Palace means that he is in London, but he's at Clarence House, which is just a few minutes up the road from Buckingham Palace. After that treatment yesterday, he drove down from Sandringham over the weekend. Uh, and those scheduled treatments will continue for the next few weeks. Now, we cannot expect regular updates from Buckingham Palace on those treatments. They will now be drip feeding us with the information they feel that we need to know. We have no idea of the cancer, of what kind of cancer it is, but they were keen to stress that it's not prostate cancer. We have no idea the stage or the prognosis either. But we do know that the king is continuing his constitutional function. So he still will be getting red boxes as well as green boxes, black boxes, blue boxes, uh, as well containing sensitive information that he needs to be across. He does about two hours reading of paperwork every single day, and that will be continuing. And he will also be continuing his weekly meeting with UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak. So his constitutional function continues. There's no need to bring in those councillors of state yet. And those are people that stand in for the king when he's unable to complete his constitutional function. Right. So we'll talk about that in a moment. But first, you know, while everybody else got this statement from Buckingham Palace, of course, his sons learned from the king about his diagnosis. And we learned that Prince Harry is supposed to be on his way back to London. What does this tell us about their strained relationship? Well, it shows that it's defrosting, most certainly. I mean, King Charles called his sons personally. He called Prince William, and he's in regular contact with him. And Prince Harry is thought to be making his way to the UK in the coming days. We don't know if he's arriving this afternoon or in later on in the week. But he is flying to this side of the world to be by his father's side at this time. It shows definitely there is a defrosting in relations there. And perhaps it has been for some time. You know, well wishes were sent on the King's 17th fifth birthday at the end of last year and Christmas has come and gone as well and just because Prince Harry and his family weren't necessarily in the country doesn't mean that there wasn't contact. The fact that King Charles called him personally and Prince Harry made the decision to travel here shows that relationships are better definitely than we anticipated. We're looking at Buckingham Palace right now which is of course is sort of the office the workspace uh, of the royals and of the king so who's going to be stepping in for his public duties? Will it be Queen Camilla or will Prince William step in because, of course, he'd been on a break while Princess Catherine was recovering from her surgery. I think it will be a combination of all of the above. Last week, we saw Queen Camilla out on manoeuvres five days of the week. You know, she was in Windsor, she was in Bath, uh, she was out about in, in London as well. Prince William is back to work tomorrow. He's doing investitures at Windsor Castle, and then he's at an event for the London Air Ambulance in the evening. But we can also expect to see uh, the Duchess of Edinburgh stepping up, Princess Anne, the Princess Royal. She's always very busy, the hardest working royal, so we can expect to see her out and about as well uh, and as well as probably the Duke of Edinburgh Prince Edward he has a week off at the moment but he definitely will be back next week so I think it will be a combination of all of these people filling in to soak up those royal duties. Uh, Afia what do you make of this very open communication that we've seen both from Buckingham Palace and from Kensington Palace in the last few days you know when the Queen was well or ill in the past or when Prince Philip had been ill it had just been a line about their recovery at home but this has been very open including the diagnosis. 
Yes, this is completely different. And I think this is a sign of the type of monarchy that King Charles III wants to have going forward. It's about being open, as open as much as he feels he can be, whilst retaining his right to privacy that everybody else has as well. And I think by giving people this information, it stops people from looking for it in the wrong ways. I mean, remember that tragic incident when uh, Kate Middleton, as she was then, a princess... Um, sorry, Kate Middleton, as she was then, uh, the Duchess of Cambridge, when she was in hospital suffering from severe morning sickness, um, a hospital nurse was tricked into giving out her diagnosis on air on the radio. And then because of the fury surrounding that, she tragically took her own life. And that is something that we absolutely want to avoid going forward. So I think that this style of monarchy about giving you know, the media and the people some information that they feel is necessary, but it's also about them using their platform to highlight medical issues, to use their influence to do good. And I think King Charles III, in talking firstly about his enlarged prostate and now about this cancer diagnosis, is, is using his platform to try and turn a negative into a positive. Afia, always great to speak with you. Thanks for bringing us the latest from London this morning. Thank you. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.